between completing your previous course and what we've done so far in this course, you've got a fair bit of experience with arrays at this point, and you understand what they are, how to use them, and some of their limitations. We're now going to study something called the array list, which has many advantages over regular arrays. The most clear one being that whereas regular arrays are immutable, array lists are mutable, which is one clear advantage. Some of these advantages can be seen directly by looking at the UML diagram for the array list, which is here. One important thing is it uses something called a generic type. You see that as an E in angle brackets, a capital E in angle brackets, and that indicates that a parameter will be passed when we use this class to indicate what type we want our array list to contain. So in other words, we could have an array list of byte or char or an array list of string or doubles or we can even make an array list of objects if we want and all we need to do is substitute that capital E that you see that's in the angle brackets with the appropriate type and then we'll get that type of array list. You'll notice that only one constructor is shown in the array list and what it does is it creates an empty list. From there you can see there are methods for adding for adding at a particular index, for clearing the array to make it empty. Uh, after you've been using it, it's not empty anymore, but you wish, may wish to restore it to being empty, and you can do that with the clear method. You can actually check to see if the array list contains a particular element with a certain value by using contains. We can get the value at a particular index in the array. We can find the index of a particular element in the array, and we can check to see if the array is empty, and as you can see, what I'm doing is going down the list of methods one at a time, talking about them. We're right near the bottom now. Last index of uh, shows the last occurrence of a particular value of a object in the array list. There's a remove method, so you can actually take an array out, and it will be removed, and all elements which follow it will pull back one index to replace it. There's obviously a size method that tells you how many elements are currently in the array list. There's a remove, which uh, has an argument of index, which will allow you to remove an uh, element from a particular index. And finally, you can set an element at a particular index to a new value by providing the index and the new value to go into the array. In an example which follows, we'll illustrate some of these by way of some code. As I just mentioned, the array list uh, has a generic type, and it can be anything we want, but it does have to be an object. So it can't be a primitive, for example, but any object at all would be fair game to specify as the generic type for an array list. So strings, of course, are objects, so we could make an array list of strings, and that's what we've done in this particular example. Notice the syntax on the top line. You say array list, you give the object type, string in this case, and you give a name for the array list that you're trying to create. In this case, we call it cities. And then you say equals new array list, and then you repeat that same object in angle brackets. And because this is a constructor for array list, you have the only constructor is an empty no arc constructor, so obviously we just have a pair of parentheses following that. Notice though in the second line we have exactly the same thing except the type is not specified in the second set of angle brackets at the end of the uh, statement. The reason is the compiler can infer that type from the type that you do give in the first set of angle brackets. They need to match. You don't have a choice. You can't put two different things in there. And since you're not allowed to put two different things, you can actually omit the second one and the compiler will simply put in a copy of whatever you specified in the first case.